Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGange doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Um, HDEF has like got the top part of my rating computer in the screen, and uh, you know what? It is what it is. I literally do this show with no help whatsoever. And one man can only do so much, so my guess is you didn't tune in to notice how well I can center a camera, which I actually can do. I just can't do everything by myself. But, um, you came for facts, and that is very good news, because I have a lot of them for you. It's day two of your massive Fukushima update. It is free to share. You can put it on your site if you wish. I charge only two things. One, you hit subscribe, and one, you hit share. RT. Aggressive simulated attack. Pentagon decrees Russian jets zooming over the USS Donald Cook. Now, the reason that this is uh, particularly worrisome and uh, for those of you that don't know, I do Fukushima news on day one, and day two tends to be world nuke news. So the more Japan-based update on this nuclear update was yesterday. Um, Russia has been spending a, a lot of time demonizing NATO. Because NATO, and Putin is right about this, NATO has been reneging on its agreement to not put a threat to Russia on its border, and with Poland and various things like that, um, NATO has broken the agreement. However, Russia is the one who went into Syria and started bombing everything. Now, I understand why they did this. They did this because ISIS hides in populated areas. What I mean is, he, right here, is a jar of thumbtacks. It's, a, it's actually a pill bottle full of thumbtacks, but uh, just the same. <laughs> is this? Anyway, that's hilarious. Um, it is a jar full of thumbtacks. Now, one of these thumbtacks is a deadly thumbtack. One of these thumbtacks is the one you're supposed to take out. Now, come and get this out of my hand without the entire dose of thumbtacks going in all directions. That needs to go up. Chris Dell is here. That needs to go up, but I don't know how. Um, there's no way that you're going to be able to do that because the, the deadly thumbtack is here in the middle of all of the thumbtacks. ISIS, thank you, is hiding in Syria in areas that are populated with innocent civilians. So, Russia comes flying in and does what America couldn't do because Obama is incompetent. However, Russia created a terrible, terrible situation by causing all of the refugees to flee and causing people that were never in Syria whatsoever to lie and say that they were so that they could get into Europe. So Russia has now taken, after accusing NATO of trying to start a war, of buzzing American warships in legal international waters. What's that? Same thing NATO's doing. Putin is just as guilty as this is as as America is. Um, they're sending their boats off our coastline to spy on us. Fourth of July, for instance. And yet, when America does it. Putin is part of the nuclear world problem. He's going to deliberately cause an attack if he is not careful. And it is going to lead to the single worst 
warfare scenario that the world has ever known. Let me go to screen share. The aerobatic skills of Russian pilots over U.S. destroyer Donald Cook in the Baltic Sea left the Pentagon and other U.S. official running for cover in Washington over aggressive close interactions with Russian fighter jets. Releasing the footage of Russian jet flybys in the vicinity of the destroyer, the U.S. Navy said that its vessel has encountered multiple aggressive flight maneuvers within close proximity of the ship. Now, does that sound like a nation that is not provoking a war? Putin is just as guilty as Obama and as NATO. The set of incidents, it goes on, took place as the U.S. ship, which had sailed from the Polish port of Gnaia, was conducting exercises with its NATO ally Poland in the Baltic Sea. The Navy announced that the Su-24 first flew over Donald Cook on Monday as U.S. sailors were rehearsing deck training drills with an allied Polish military helicopter. There were many of them. The numerous close-range, low-altitude enc encounters were witnessed at 3 p.m. local time. And that forced the commander of the ship, it says, to suspend helicopter refueling on the deck until the Russian jets departed the area. This is provocation. There is no other word for it. It is a nuclear nation provoking another nuclear nation. The Donald Cook happened to be around 70 kilometers away from a Russian naval base when the Su-24 planes passed by, according to the Russian Defense Ministry spokesman, Major General Igor Konishnikov. On April 13th, the pilots of the Russian Air Force Su-24 planes took part in a training exercise over international waters in the Baltic Sea. Do you hear that? International waters. We were allowed to be there. Their route took them to an area where the USS Donald Cook was present around 70 kilometers from a Russian naval base. He added that all flights were undertaken by the Russian Air Force strictly follow all international codes. Well, then maybe there needs to be an international code that says doing barrel rolls over an air uh, over a warship could quite possibly provoke a nuclear war. Maybe that needs to be stated, because clearly Putin isn't intelligent enough to figure that out. Clearly Obama also is not intelligent enough to figure that out. Clearly NATO isn't intelligent enough to figure that out. No, it's just people like you and I that no one ever listens to that are absolutely right in every way. I hear the Russians are up to their old tricks again in the Yukon, that is the U.S. Internet, European, excuse me, U.S. European Council, in the area of responsibility. Operation Inherit Resolve spokesman Colonel Steve Warren said during a briefing on Wednesday. This is something they've done repeatedly. Repeatedly. So please, once again, I implore you, can we get off of the Putin warship? The man is not someone who is going to be bringing us a whole lot of help right now. He really isn't. And if you can't figure that out, then maybe there's something painfully wrong with you. Uh, friends, this is RT2. Pentagon chief seeks reforms, calls Russia's number one strategic threat. You are probably the number one strategic threat if you are a nuclear superpower, which Russia is, and if you are sending your warplanes over our ships as we practice, you might be considered a strategic threat. I'm no big fan of the New World Order, but uh, this guy that said this is absolutely correct. That is That would be the definition of a threat. Yes, I think we all agree there. Seeking to make the U.S. military more efficient and better coordinated in the face of strategic threat from Russia, Secretary of Defense Ash Carter is seeking practical updates to the Pentagon's organizational framework that was established in the 1970s. Speaking at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C., Carter said the reforms were necessary to make the U.S. military more agile and able to address the five strategic challenges which he named as Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, and terrorism. I can tell you what, we, we haven't 
provoked North Korea, and they've gone out of their way to attack people. Um, you have people, oh, on the right, and again, I'm a libertarian, but you have these crazy people on the right saying, Israel is to blame. Yeah, Israel is to blame for what? For Belgium being bombed? Yeah, because the Jews are clearly oppressing people from the nation of Belgium. Uh, ISIS and Islam gets along with none of its neighbors, Jewish or not. The current organization of the Miras military, from the International Organization for Combatant Commands to the role of chairman of the Joint Chiefs and Staff outside the chain of command, is a product of the Goldwater, Nic Goldwater Nichols Department of Defense Reorganization Act that was signed into law in October of 86. Goldwater was a great man. While the 1986 reform was driven by the lessons of Vietnam and the botched Desert One hostage crisis in Iran, Carter said the updates were not driven by failure. And um, this is interesting. Listen to this. The Russia is a threat to the U.S. world uh, hegemony concept. They're trying to say that the reason we're having this trouble is because NATO is provoking Russia. I would argue that NATO is provoking Russia because Russia will not stop doing things like carpet bombing Syria. Now, I understand we need to get ISIS out of these areas. I understand that. But George Bush did not kill as many innocent civilians, I don't think, as Russia did, just slathering bombs all over Syria. They were giving out bombs like Tic Tacs, and it created a refugee crisis. Yeah, Russia met its objectives, but at what cost? And uh, they lied about it. Uh, they said that they didn't do exactly what they did. What, do you think it's a coincidence that the refugee crisis happened at the same time? Of course they're not all from Syria. Of course they're lying. Uh, and another one from RT. It seems to be RT day. I didn't plan it that way, but it is. Hypersonic warhead for future ICBM successfully tested in Russia report. Now, where are the Bernie Sanders supporters? You know, my leftist weenies, many of them I like. But my, my leftists' friends... I have one friend that's a Bernie fan and one friend that's a Hillary Clinton fan, and they're actually thinking people, which scares me. Um, where is the outrage? The rest of the Bernie fans I know are nutcases. Let me ask you a question. Where are the leftists? If the United States was going willy-nilly testing nuclear bombs or testing warheads that could very easily be fitted with nuclear weaponry, there would be, you would think, an outcry in this country, particularly from the left, and I would actually agree with them on that. Where is the left when Russia is testing components for a weapon that can wage nuclear war against the United States of America. Where are the greeny weenies? I don't hear them either. Let me go to screen share real quick. Oh, welcome aboard. More and more viewers popping in. Nice to see all of you. Make sure you leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. If you're watching right now, leave a comment. Russian strategic missile forces have conducted a successful intercontinental ballistic missile launch Testing a hypersonic cruise vehicle, Interfax report, uh, citing a source familiar with the scene. Now, this was reported, I should say. The test launch was performed Tuesday during an RS-18A strategic ballistic missile NATO designation. It's a, <clears throat> that's a NATO designation. And it was from a missile deployment area in Orenburg region, the source said, adding that the test was a success. For you nerds, it's UR-100 and NATO. Uh, SS-19 Stiletto. Russia's defense ministry has, either deni has neither denied nor confirmed the report. All modern nuclear warheads are delivered on targets using ballistic trajectory that can be calculated. Therefore, such warheads would be intercepted. 
Hypersonic warheads currently in design would be capable of maneuvering by yaw and pitch, eventually becoming impossible to intercept, thus making any existing and upcoming missile defense system impotent. Now, I don't really believe that the United States doesn't have something to counter this, because while I am sure that Obama is that incompetent, I'm not sure that everybody around him <coughs> is. But Russia is deliberately testing weaponry, and that, to the best of their knowledge, and anybody's knowledge, can theoretically get around any way we have to block them. But that's not considered a provocation. Why don't we send our airplanes to do barrel rolls over the testing site, since that seems to be what you do when you're trying to offer peace? Just using their logic. The new warhead, a St. ICBM replacement Sarmat ready for launch, um, is likely to be ready for the upcoming RS-28 Sarmat heavy liquid propelled ICBM, which is expected to enter testing later this year. New weaponry pointed at the U.S., tested in Russia, and yet none of us are supposed to be the least bit alarmed, right? It's all normal, nothing to see here, just, uh, you know, move on. Um, I wanted to go real quick and mention something Trump had said in closing with our little Russian update here. Gotta shoot him, Trump says, as Pentagon downplays Russian warplane encounters. Basically, Trump is saying here, we understand a show of muscle. We understand that you need to show America in the world that you cannot be messed with. We understand that. When you do this sort of thing repeatedly, as Russia has done for the last couple of years, at some point, if America is to hold its own at all in the eyes of the world, they have to shoot one of these Russian bastards now. That's pretty much what uh, Trump is saying here. He is not warmongering. He is saying that this has gone too far now. To use an analogy, if you have a muscle car and a cop sees you peel out, he may or may not give you a ticket that day, depending on the cop. However, if he sees you doing it over and over again, you're doomed. Russia has not been just squealing the tires once. They have been provocating war. Republican presidential hope for Donald Trump has said the U.S. may have to shoot down Russian warplanes approaching American military assets. The Pentagon is saying that uh, Russia is doing this to send a signal, not to provoke. Well, once or twice was a signal. It's important that Russia realize that this is now a provocation and we will destroy you if you continue to do this. Normally, said Trump and Obama, let's say a president because you want to make at least a call, a, a call or two. But normally Obama would call up Putin and say, listen, do us a favor. Don't do that. Get that maniac. Just stop it. But we don't have that kind of a president. He's going to be out putting, playing golf or something, Trump said. And if that doesn't work out, I don't know. You know, at a certain point, when the sucker comes at you, you gotta shoot, he added. You gotta shoot. I mean, you gotta shoot. And it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a total lack of respect for our country. And it's a total lack of respect for Obama, which, as you know, they don't respect. Um, again, Russia doing exactly what it is that they don't like when other nations do. But for Putin, it's supposed to be okay. Over the past two years, the U.S. has increased troops deployment in Europe, claiming it to be a response to Russian aggression. Moscow sees the rising number of NATO military assets at its border as a threat and a violation of the spirit of Russia's agreement with the alliance, which states that no significant deployments would be made by NATO near Russia. No legal definition of what significant means was ever made. So rather than ask NATO and call a meeting of NATO, which I do believe is Russian's uh, uh, option as a member, or as a, uh, as a world power, I should say, rather than do that, it'd be best to buzz their warplanes and test new missiles. And that's what you do if you're seeking peace. Friends, please listen to me. 
We all know that Obama, Bush, they've all sent us into the hungry jaws of World War III. We know this. So is Putin. Okay? So is Putin. Guys, we are almost all the way done here. I just want to remind you, as we get to our last three or four stories here, to look up Sticker Junkie. Because Sticker Junkie is where you're going to want to go to get the best stickers that you've ever seen, made in ways that are far more awesome than you ever imagined they were going to be when the idea was in your head. How do you get these stickers made? You get these stickers made by going to Sticker Junkie. If you don't have any ideas, I'm sure D. Lake can, uh, the site is laid out. He's the designer, Mr. D. Lake. He'll go ahead and make sure that you have it decked out, pimped out exactly the way you want it. If you already know what you want, send them the picture. All that matters is that you remember on checkout to type in correct views or the correct views. Because when you do that, you're going to get a discount because you're a listener of the show. So you're going to have the best stickers you've ever seen, and you're going to get them cheaper than you ever imagined. Sticker junkie. Friends, um, shtfplan.com, Max Slavo, report cyber attackers infect nuclear plant systems with computer virus. Now, the way this happens is they are allowing USB sticks on computers that run nuclear power plants. It doesn't make any sense to me. Can you prevent it when you have to update it? Yeah. How? You put this information Every code that needs to be brought in needs to be analyzed line by line by line and ran in an offline computer to test for any bugs. Then the update should be given to the nuclear power station computer. They're not doing that. Why? Money. We all know money means more than your health. So what I'm about to tell you here is all because they won't do what I just described to you in 30 seconds. They take millions, if not billions of dollars from the taxpayer, and they can't even make sure that cyber threats are given on their computer via a USB drive on an update. And yet they have the most powerful force that we know of in the known universe that we know of, nuclear power at their disposal. These are the geniuses that we're talking about here. Uh, I'm going to screen share again. The threat of a large-scale terrorist attack caused by chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear weapons of mass destruction has been at the forefront of investigations in recent months. Months So much so that in March, the White House issued a warning highlighting the four most likely scenarios of a nuclear attack on U.S. soil. There's a link right there. You can see it on FactCam. Following the attack in Brussels, it says earlier this year, it was learned that terrorists had not only targeted nuclear facilities in Belgium, but that the chief of the power plant in question had been staked out, recorded, and followed. A security guard at the nuclear plant also died under mysterious circumstances. So now the breach in security can be achieved by ISIS by simply manipulating the whereabouts of the security guard. Don't you feel safe? Now, according to a report from Zero Hedge, and I have found them to be very reliable, Another nuclear plant has been targeted, and this time with a virus that has infected its computer systems, for the reason that I laid out to you at the beginning of this. I hate when people don't listen to common sense. Remember when someone used the Stuxnet virus, or rather worm, in an Iranian nuclear power plant several years ago to freeze Iranian nuclear production, which they should have done because they're building it on an earthquake zone that's going to melt the plant down, even if they are peaceful, which as we realized yesterday, they are not, leading to a major diplomatic scandal involving the spy agencies of both U.S. and Israel, as the world learned that in the present-day industrial sabotage, you only needed a flash drive and a computer virus 
to render even the most sophisticated piece of industrial machinery obsolete. Well, moments ago, Bloomberg, it said, reported that a computer virus was discovered in a German nuclear power plant, for the reasons that I gave you at the beginning of this section. A computer virus, it said, was discovered at the Gunderimagen nuclear power plant in Bavaria, German news service DPA reported. No danger to employees or populace, no, never. Power plant noticed the virus on its Block B on Monday, and RWE specialists so to determine how malware entered the computer system in Building 08. The BR, which is Google translated, is reporting that the malware is thought to be brought in by a data carrier, and the affected portion of the system is the fuel assembly loading area. Oh, that's wonderful. Look up what that is, and you'll cringe like I do. The affected IT system, of which I have a degree in, so please listen to me on this, is part of the fuel assembly loading machine of the power plant. This raises, for example, old fuel from the reactor core and transports it to the storage pool. An influence on the control of these loading machines has the IT system according to the operator, but not. In the power plant, all other safety-related IT systems have been checked without finding the meantime. The component authority, it goes on, and the Federal Office for Information Security, that's BSI, has been informed and their renaissance takes place at the assistance of IT specialists in the RWE group. The malicious software may have been introduced by a data carrier. And it says, ironically, in the case of the Iran infection, one of the suspected parties was Germany. So, we can't even be wise enough to have an IT head check and run on a separate computer the entire code before putting it into a flash drive that could quite likely be the flash drive computer, the computer that leads to the destruction of how many millions of lives, acres, whatever. Wonder wonderful news. It says Americans need to prepare for a nuclear attack, and this is very good, very, very good to hear. So I, I get lots of people saying, what can I do, Sam, what can I do, what can I, here's what you can do. Um, they suggest, aside from usual stuff like food, water, tools, weapons, and medical supplies, you need to follow a gas mask with a filter, specifically designed for radioactive materials, a hand crack radio for weather reports, yeah, because you're going to need to figure out where this is coming from. You can't trust our government to tell you where the uh, leak is going to, where the uh, weather is going to take it. Because they didn't monitor anything after Fukushima. Uh, you need a Geiger counter, that, that, that's a given. It uh, counts a lot of the radionuclides in the air for you. Potassium iodide, that's for your thyroid. Zeolite, bentonite clay, shout out to Giselle and activated charcoal for de decontamination. Buy food grade versions, and this will detox the body. I'm gonna look into a lot of this because Christelle and I own none of it. Uh, Corella and spirulina, also good for detoxing the body. And it said, yeah, you'll find that everything on this list will also be useful for scenarios such as nuclear war and dirty bomb attacks. So uh, there's that question, what can I do, what can I do, uh, very useful. ISIS wants to launch chemical and nuclear attacks, EU, NATO security chiefs, this is from Prison Planet and RT. NATO and EU security chiefs say that the Islamic State, that would be Daesh, wants to use chemical or nuclear weapons to attack Britain. During the Security and Counter-Terror Conference in London on Tuesday and Wednesday, a group of policing and counterterrorism experts delivered a dire warning. Georges Bertel Silva, the European Commission's deputy chief of counterterrorism, told the Telegraph that with CBRN, that would be chemical, biological, radioactive, and nuclear materials, there is a justified concern. It says his view was shared by Dr. Jamie Shia, NATO's deputy head of emerging threats, who told the conference, so we know terrorists are trying to acquire these substances. So the stuff that I just told you to stock up on is stuff that you are really going to want to stock up on for reasons that I am giving you right here. Shia also warned that Islamist groups, that'd be Daesh, may be splitting into two. That's not good. Well, then again, divide and conquer, maybe. 
Um, they're going to split into two with a Syria and Iraq based state and a network of terror cells in Europe. Hopefully that will work out for them as well as it did for Britain when they tried to send the settlers over and ended up losing the nation. Hopefully they will fight amongst themselves. Uh, their comments come as police authorities unveil plans to train a million UK workers to deal with terror attacks over the next 12 months. That's good news. A group of former security officials have also launched an initiative to examine Britain's borders. So, I mean, this is real, friends. It's going on all around you. We are getting a lot of talk about nuclear and other really nasty attacks possibly coming to the West. Um, as we go into our world nuke news here, and they try to give me a pop-up. No, it ain't going to work. Watch your pop-ups on this one. WND.com. Watch for pop-ups. EMT alert. Two North Korean satellites now orbit over the U.S. The threat continues to race, hair-like, at an alarming rate. North Korea is about to be, unfortunately, obliterated. Um... Other than sanctions, the world has lar largely left the insanity that is North Korea alone. They have now started to alienate even their only ally, China, which made that leaving alone even a possibility. And um, you're going to find that we would have already probably slapped them down if they weren't direct neighbors to South Korea. Uh, the chances of them actually getting a nuclear bomb into America, except for maybe Hawaii, is probably pretty slim. But even if they try, it's going to be devastation, and it's going to be horrible, and it's going to be horrible for us and our allies and South Korea and everyone else. Due, in part, to China and South Korea, America and the world has mostly let this tin horn dictator alone. And uh, I have reason to believe that's not going to be the case here for much longer. North Korea now has two satellites orbiting over the United States. That is over your house, don't you feel great? Capable of performing a surprise electromagnetic pulse attack at an altitude and trajectory that evade U.S. national missile defenses. Now, if this was to happen, it would be an electromagnetic pulse that would obliterate all things electronic. Your car, your gasoline, uh, your cell phone, and Christelle would die. All of it, gone. That's what an EMT attack is. Peter Vincent uh, Pry told G2 Bulletin that the satellites can be commanded either to deorbit or hit a target on the ground or explode at a high altitude to create an EMP effect that would knock out the unprotected U.S. national electrical grid system and all life-sustaining critical infrastructures that depend upon it. The threat, Price said, continues to raise hair-like at an alarming rate compared to the tortoise pace of our preparations. Thank you, Mr. Obama. The satellites KMS-32 and KMS-4 are orbiting at an altitude of 300 miles with trajectories to put them daily over the U.S. KMS-32 and has launched in December of 2012. So people are asking why many of us support Donald Trump. Whether you do or don't like Trump, I don't really care if he offends the entire world. Here's what I care about. What president is going to do something? where I can't come on here and have to tell you that we're not prepared for an EMT attack that could wipe out civilization as we know it. Okay? I don't really give a damn about how he talks to women or how he pisses off China. I care about not dying in a, a, a horrible scenario such as this. And that is the bigger picture. And those that can see the bigger picture are probably either voting for Gary Johnson or Donald Trump. Because those are the only two people that are going to address this. And if you don't like Trump, then look into Gary Johnson. Friends, and that brings us to the dumb D of the day! Well, wait, actually, let me think about this. Before we get to the dumb D of the day, we have something even better. I do have to give you the update for the elections which is hilarious because I damn near forgot to do it. So, um, 
I'm going to have to tell people later on where to skim to to get this before I get to the dumb deal of the day. I don't believe I almost forgot this. Ted Cruz has dropped out. Gone. Cruz has cruised. Overfinished, done, gone, out, to, con to quote Anthrax. Gone. Done. Over. He's gone. Kasich is staying in it. Sanders won Indiana 2. So Sanders is going to remain in this race. This is wonderful, wonderful news, friends. Absolutely wonderful news. It said that here, the Democrats are in disarray. Yeah, I bet they are. And um, this really, at this point now, opens the door wide for Trump. It's very hard to imagine any other way. I mean, and right here, Drudge Report. Trump wins Indiana in a landslide. Uh, Cruz is out of there, gone. See ya. And uh, Mr. Trump has won huge, as did uh, Mr. Sanders, over the witch of Hillary. Now that brings us to the dumdy of the day. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. The dumdy of the day. to Chernobyl because our family is from there. Let me tell you what. My family is from Gatton, Ohio. We don't have a new plant here, but if a, a nuclear disaster was to destroy Canton, Ohio, I was born there. I'm not coming back. I don't want heart disease, I don't want cancer, I don't want my brain shutting down, I don't want to be sick at all. Listen to these idiots, and this is why Chernobyl will take 3,000 years to recover, it's from Yahoo News, and it's true by the way, and that's why we don't support Nuke, that's why you shouldn't support Nuke, that's why I'm talking into a camera for over a half hour. Tuesday will mark 30 years since the world's worst nuclear accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power station in Pripyat, Ukraine. Ukraine, excuse me. The Chernobyl disaster called it caused irreversible damage. That means cannot be undone, no matter how many nice words you use, to the environment that will last for thousands of years. That's from Greenpeace. That's hardly a right organization. On their 2016 study of the accident. Never in human history, that's not true, has such a large quantity of long-lived radioisotopes been released into the environment. That's not true. Uh, the Fukushima was far worse. It was four reactors and I'm not out. Um, although three decades have passed since the accident, the town of Pripyat is no closer to being repopulated. The immediate area around Chernobyl will have to remain empty for at least 3,000 years because of dangerously high contamination levels. Proof say some opponents of nuclear energy's long-term damage. I would say that that would be yes. A resounding yes. The, despite proponents' claims that it is safe, the history of nuclear energy is marked by a number of disasters and near disasters. Those of you on screen share are about to see the link to it. Those of you can see behind me already see it. And this is from the Organization of Physicians for Social Responsibility in 1986. Shame year is the shuttle disaster. Chernobyl disaster in the Ukraine is one of the most frightening examples of the potentially catastrophic consequences of a nuclear accident. An estimated 220,000 people were displaced from their homes, and a radioactive fallout from the accident made 4,400 square kilometers of agricultural land and 6,820 square kilometers of forest in Belarus and the Ukraine unstable. If you don't believe me, look up Belarus birth defects and see how you can eat your supper after that, which is good because I never get to eat around here. A power surge during a reactor test led to an explosion of Unit 4 on April 26, 1986, and the subsequent fires to the plant. 150,000 square kilometers of land between Belarus, the Ukraine, and Russia, which is an area larger than the state of New York, 
was contaminated so severely that 8 million people suffered serious land use restrictions. And now you got people wanting to come back. My husband, which is why you're getting the dumb the other day, you dumb bat, had wanted to come back to his homeland all of his life. He came back when it was closed here, when it was prohibited to come here. Oh, how brave. I gave myself cancer on purpose. He crossed through the barbed wire. Oh, great. Uh, Darwinism in action. This is from Alexandra Lozbin, one of the estimated 160 people who have returned to the zone. This is how idiots die. This is where, I mean, I'm not going to be happy anytime anybody gets sick. I'm not happy anytime anybody gets cancer. I'm not like that. But there are some people that when you get it, and you have moved in to a radioactive wasteland that has bred nothing but birth defects, even for people that are living outside the exclusion zone, then you have to wonder if maybe you're just too stupid to live. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Please donate if you can. The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me, I put towards the show. I come out here busting ass for you. Do me a favor. Please donate. And uh, please go to Change Transportation if you need a ride. Don't call Uber, call Change. Let them know you heard about it on the correct views and their price match you. Good night, friends. God bless.